Good morning guys, Lisa here. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen. After I got through in the garden this morning, which it was actually a great, great morning to be out working in the garden, it's like 75 degrees out there, which beats the heck out of the 95 to 99 we've been having. So when I got through in my garden, I headed up the street to the Yupik Berry Farm. And I got to pick nine pounds of the most absolute beautiful blueberries. They're just gorgeous. And since my new ball book came in the mail this week, I'm so excited. I'm going to start and make some blueberry syrup. Now, this is something I try to do every year when the berries are in season. But, you know, sometimes you just don't get around to it or I try new syrup recipes. But the blueberry syrup is always a go-to in my household. There's only two of us here, and the particular recipe that I'm using in the book says um, to my, that this is for half pints. So I'm not going to increase that to anything because half pints are good for me and my husband. I typically don't eat breakfast, but I do like to have a breakfast dinner occasionally. So this blueberry syrup is going to be an awesome thing on my shelf. Now I've already washed them really well. But I'm just making a double check to make sure, and I just saw one, that I didn't pick any that were still had a little dark red tinge on them. Because if they've got the, any dark red left over, then that's bitter. So you want to make sure that your blueberries are completely blue and ripe. So, and what I'm going to do, I am going to double the recipe because I'm not making jam, so I'm not using pectin. So I don't really have to worry about it not setting right because I've tried to double a recipe. So since it's syrup, you can't go wrong. So I'm going to make a double batch. And then with the pulp that's left over from the blueberries, I'm going to be using it to make some blueberry butter from the ball book. I haven't seen that recipe in there before, so I'm excited about getting to try it. I love flavored butters. But to have one that I can keep on my shelf, sustainable, that's not going to go bad on me, it's a winner in my book. So, I need to just quickly finish, pick, just double checking to make sure there's no dark red. The recipe called for um, one batch was four and a half pounds, or four and a quarter pounds. And that's kind of a lot if you have to buy the blueberries in the store. That would be some expensive syrup. But because I'm blessed with having the U-Pick farm right down the street from me, makes it a little different. You know, I, I got a, a little over nine pounds and I did put some back in the refrigerator. That way I can have fresh blueberries on top of some pancakes with some blueberry syrup and some blueberry butter. That's blueberry heaven. So, let me get finished. I'm um, just double checking these to make sure they're all ripe. I don't want bitter syrup. And after that, I'll get the rest of the ingredients out and we're gonna get started. I'm doing this in two different stock pots because I need to take my potato masher and mash the berries down. So the directions say that it's four and a quarter cups of blueberries with three cups of sugar. But what I need to do first is extract the juices from the blueberries. So I've got it going. It's um, on medium high and as soon as it starts to boil, medium boil. Then I'm going to take my potato masher and mash that down really good. And I've got another stock pot going here. And I've got my canning pot on getting warm. My bottles are in the dishwasher. And I've gone through my checklist that I keep just to make sure I have all of my supplies ready. My lids are in hot water, uh, softening and simmering. And I have a kettle that is got a, a full kettle just in case I need to top off my stock pot once I get, or my canning pot. Once I get all the jars in there, I want to make sure I, that I have enough hot water to cover the jars by one to two inches. So I've kind of got that ready to go. And really the only thing that this recipe takes, it doesn't take any pectin. It just takes the sugar and a tablespoon and a half of um, bottled lemon juice. And it did specify bottled because of the acidity level. You can't always guarantee that fresh lemons are going to be the acidity level that you need. So it does say... Um, to use bottled lemon juice. So I'm just waiting on these to kind of boil down a little bit. And then once I mash them or when I start mashing them, it says that I need to let them uh, simmer boil, just a really low boil for 12 minutes. 
So, as soon as they start boiling, I'll bring you back over and we'll go to the next step. My stock pot on the stove has already come to a medium-high boil, so I've reduced the heat on it and I'm now letting it simmer for 12 minutes. This one is about a minute behind, which is perfect timing for me because that means in 12 minutes I can work on the stock pot that's on the stove and then this one will be ready. And if you're a canner and you don't have one of these electric eyes, this thing is awesome. It has saved me so many times. And it's not really because I can on a smooth top stove. It's just a lot of times you can't get this many stock pots on your stove at once. Your, your water bath pot is just too big. So it, it's just been a real lifesaver. And I can actually can on this thing. It is a professional. So, and you need it to be, I believe it's like 15,000 BTUs. Um, so, you know, it's big enough to handle a canner, which makes it great in the summertime. I can can outside if I'm just doing one pot or one batch of something, then I don't have to pull out a camp stove or anything, you know, that's going to be a dual burner. So I can just plug it up and can outside. Makes life so much easier. All right, I need to drain the juice. And what I need to do, I've got me some cheesecloth on another pot. And I'm just going to pour it or actually scoop it because I really don't want it on my clothes. And then from there, we're going to elevate the cheesecloth and let it drain. From this point, I need to elevate the berries. I need to lift the cheesecloth out and tie it off and elevate the berries over my stock pot in the sink so the juices can drain out. So what I've got is just a piece of um, rope, just a thin twine, and I'm putting, let me show you, I'm putting a slip knot in it. So we're just gonna go around and bring it back through and make a slip knot. That way, once I get the cheesecloth together, I can actually put the string around it and thread it through there and pull it and it's going to pull the cheesecloth together. You want to be very careful doing this so your cheesecloth doesn't slip and you lose your berry juice. So I'm going to get the short sides first, get a good grip on those, and then the other short side, and then start bringing the longer sides in. Make sure I've got a good hold on all sides of the cheesecloth. Now, it doesn't matter if your berries cool down because you're going to let this sit and drain for a while. Okay. See why I said wearing an apron can get quite messy. All right. So I'm going to hold my string in one hand. Go around. Make sure I get the right loop. This one. We're going to go through the slip knot and then pull both of them. Hope you can see this. Okay, there we go. We are tied off. Now, just to make sure it's good and secure, I'm going to go around it again and this time tie a knot. Okay, now I need to suspend it over my stock pot. So, let's do it this way. I'm just going to tie a knot in the very end of it. And carefully get it over the sink and over the stock pot that's in the sink. closer to me and there we go I don't have knobs on my kitchen cabinets I prefer not to have them 
So what I have to do when I drain berries, I have, let me see if you can see it. I have just a nozzle that comes out on my sink and I go right in between the nozzle and suspend it from it off of the side. And there we go. Now I'm just going to let this sit until all of the berry juice drains out. I'm going to drain both pots in this same stock pot. Okay, it's been about 50 minutes. So I put another pot in my second sink over here and just moved one of them out of the way. And now I want to take it and just squeeze all I can to get any juice that may be left over. I want to get every little ounce of goodness. So let's see. Ooh, that's still a good bit left. Okay, I've got the pot on the stove with the berry juice in it, and it's simmering, and now I just need to get the pulp out of these bags. Once I put the sugar in the pot and the lemon juice, I want to taste it to make sure it's going to be sweet enough. So the next part of the recipe says that I need one cup of water. So I've put two cups in my pot since I'm doing a two cup batch and I need six cups of sugar. Okay, we're gonna add those two together. Okay, so at that point I need to dissolve the sugar and it says to allow it to boil for 20 minutes. So a medium boil for 20 minutes uncovered. So let's get this back on the stove and Get it heated up and get the sugar dissolved, and then we'll come back for the next step. And now I need to add my blueberry juice to it. And when you make your simple syrup, your sugar and water mixture, you need to let it boil, it said, for 20 minutes. But you want to make sure that you stand over the pot occasionally and just keep giving it a good stir. Otherwise, you're going to end up with crystallized sugar all on the side of your pot. Okay, and I'm going to add my three tablespoons of lemon juice and give that a stir. And now we're going to return it to the stove on a low boil for five minutes. My jars are ready and my lids are heated, so we are good to go there. Okay, I boiled my mixture for five minutes, stirring once. And then it says to remove the foam. Sometimes with things you don't really get much foam and sometimes you get a little bit more. So what you want to do, I added, I added a tablespoon of butter to it just to reduce it. So I'm just kind of pulling the foam because it does tend to be bitter. So I'm pulling it to the side and I'm just going to scoop it out. And it's easier if you put a paper towel in a bowl and scoop it into it. It's just easier to clean your plate that way. You don't have to get all of it out, but you want to get as much as you possibly can. Okay, I've checked my rims already. Ooh, that's hot. My water bath canner is turned up a little higher. That is very hot. And it says fill to a quarter of an inch. Fingertip tight. And in the canner it goes. Alright, this is my last jar. 
it's about a quarter of an inch from the top. So we're going to wipe the rim good. So good. And this will be my tenth jar. So I actually got a little bit more than what the recipe says. Um, so I'm excited about that, but it is going to be absolutely divine. Okay, folks, it needs to process, I believe it said 10 minutes. Let's double check. Yes, 10 minutes. So as soon as um, my water bath canner comes to a boil, then we're going to start timing it for 10 minutes. Okay, I, I processed them for 10 minutes, then I turned it off and I just tilted the lid on it so the jars and the water could kind of start settling down and get a little bit more acclimated to the outside temperature. Let's see what we've got now. Oh my word. That is gorgeous. I'm really looking forward to uh, a few recipes with this. Okay guys, so if you have loose lids when they come out, the rings, just let them sit. They're going to be okay. And actually, all of mine have, have sealed already. So remember, let them sit undisturbed for 24 hours. At that time, remove the rings and wash the rings and the jars really good, just in case there was any siphoning down the sides of the jars. And you want to be sure and date them and use the FIFO method. Store them in the back, pull the older jars forward, and you're good to go for a year. So I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so where you can follow me in gardening and cooking, a little bit of baking and home decor, a little bit about a lot. So until next time, guys, be blessed.